It's a breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, we take a look at the second conversation. The PDP governorship primaries, winners of the People's Democratic Party gubernatorial primaries are Sharif Oborowori for Delta, Oladi Major Dejiron, popularly known as uh, Jadon for Lagos, Finteri for Adamawa, Shei Makinde of Oshun State, and Shegun Shouwimi Ogun State, Titus Uba for Benue, Pitamba for Enugu State. You also have Fubara for Rivers in Gombe. We have Mohammed uh, Badi Mej as PDP candidate of the state. In Nasarawa, we have David. Sharif Abdullahi for Yoga State, Kefas, Abu in Taraba, and lastly for Kwara, we have Abdullahi Yaman. Joining us this morning to analyze this is a political analyst, Upunabon Katari, is our guest this morning. It's good to have you join us, Upunabon Katari. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning, Nigeria. Um, so, what, what do you make of the candidates that have actually emerged of, from the People's Democratic Party primaries uh, that was just recently conducted? Well, uh, I cannot assess all the candidates in all the states of the federation. But one thing is certain, that uh, most of those candidates were foisted on the party. Uh, I, I can tell you for sure that the candidates are not a referenda, are not referenda of um, the approval of the delegates. The delegates were instructed by the leaders of the various parties. Those who are governors instructed the delegates. Those who are not governors but are leaders of the party instructed the delegates on what to do. So willy-nilly, they went in there and uh, carried out the orders of their leader. That is exactly what happened. Not as if the candidates are popular, especially in River State, I can say that. The two candidates, including the APC and the PDP candidates, are not popular at all. They are not at all. But they were just foisted on the party, and uh, they were instructed, of course, that of the APC, you have the primaries today, but before then we had a consensus candidate. And this led to a lot of excitement, where uh, the agreement aspirants even went ahead to purchase funds. Uh, so you also have the issue of Man Musabi, you have Ojukaye, you have one other guy, and so on. And uh, in the PDP, of course, Fubara uh, <laughs> was first head of the party. Uh, in the governor, uh, he was the accountant general of the state. He was a cashier, became the DFA from the house, became a permanent secretary, became a council general. While most of these other, others were denied promotion in the civil service, he had rapid promotion, and obviously for this reason. If you recall, he, was even, he has been declared one time by the EFCC. And uh, it's surprisingly, you know, the man is all over without any harassment from the EFCC. We live in a country where the tempest of justice blows straightfully. It is so sad. But in, since, uh, since I was going back to your question, uh, most of the candidates are not choices of the delegates. The delegates were uh, coerced into voting for those candidates, and that was exactly what happened. Um, but I, I have, I have um, an addition to what I've just said. You know, like I say, it's supposed to be secret ballot. So most times when these delegates come out and complain, I just say to them, "You, you need to shut up. You, you did what you did because not because you're gullible." but because you're rapacious, you're greedy. Otherwise, if the, a governor, for example, instructs you to go and vote for a particular person, you go cast your vote, nobody knows who voted for who. It's just between you and your conscience. So you go cast your vote, and at the end of the day, the results will be announced there, with the governor thinking that uh, you've gone to carry out his instructions, only to be dazed when they announce the results that uh, the people protested. That's what they call the protest votes. But you don't have such people, people with credibility and character, and that is why we'll still find ourselves, where we find ourselves today in this country. All right. Uh, um, let, let's stick with River State for a bit. And you've uh, given us a bit of a history of um, Simena Laye uh, Fubara, who is the Accountant General of uh, the state of former Accountant General of River State, of course, uh, which has traditionally uh, required his um, appointees who want to contest. Uh, 
elected position, so elections to resign. But um, you said he was a cashier to yes, and Wiki. I saw a paper also saying that, and um, he moved from there to become the director of finance and administration at Government House when Wiki became governor, and was his promotion was accelerated, became his permanent secretary, and uh, then uh, accountant general of the state. And um, why? Why do you think that uh, um, this man? became the anointed or is the anointed candidate of yes on wiki um of course uh, it was almost unopposed you know a few of those them who still participated in the primary uh lost woefully kofi uh kofi you're more or less a river son uh you just want to squeeze the words out of my mouth <laughs> otherwise i strongly believe that uh, without being told you can extrapolate this is a man that has been declared wanted by the EFCC for uh, fraud to the tune of 400 and something billion. We all know that there is no way Kubara would have uh, stolen or allegedly stolen 400 and something billion without the connivance of the government. In fact, at the behest, not connivance, at the behest of the government. So if he is being accused, not substantiated, but not uh, uh, before the court proven. But if he's been accused by the EFCC of 400 or something billion naira fraud, let me tell you the truth. It is they are not actually going for him. They were going for the governor, but because the governor has immunity, and that is why he's been arrested, so that he could school for that, and there will be a potential proof when they institute this matter, and that is the truth. So what am I trying to say here? Probably the governor is trying to cover up his sleazy deals, financial deals, you know, and he's trying to edit. it. He needs somebody that will cover his own track. And that is what a lot of us believe is the reason for the choice of Omar. That is our conviction, rightly or wrongly, and we stand to be uh, contradicted on that. All right. Um, let, let's take a look at the, the situation in Lagos State. Um, uh, with uh, the APC holding sway in Lagos. Um, PDP has huffed and puffed in recent times um, or with uh, Jimmy Agbaje always emerging as the, um, the flag bearer of the party in the governorship elections in this state. Uh, this time around, Jimmy Agbaje uh, did not emerge. And um, the young man who decamped from the APC, having worked uh, for the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State uh, for years with his um, political um, uh, uh, structure called Go Lagos for Lagos. Uh, he moved from the APC to the PDP amidst fanfare. You had, uh, uh, you know, the movers and shakers of the PDP storming Lagos State for his uh, official decamping. And, um, of course, Wike was there, Saraki was there. And on that day, some of his supporters were asking uh, Jimmy Abadji to stay clear of the party and to take a rest that he had tried his best over the past few years. Uh, Jando is how he's affectionately called. What do you think the chances of the PDP in, um, in Lagos State will be uh, with a new face other than Jimmy Abadji? Well, it probably there might be an upset, which is very unlikely. I, I, I think, if, uh, going by my permutation, I strongly impugn PDP uh, winning Lagos State because Lagos State is predominantly uh, an APC state. So it's going to be an uphill fight. Well, not, not impossible, but it's going to be an uphill fight. The advantage uh, the present uh, standard bearer might be having is uh, he was a member of the APC. Of course, I remember him uh, crying out against injustice in the party. He now from the, this group you talked about. Lagos I, for I Lagos. Think I watched him on channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, probably he has uh, sympathy from most APC members in Lagos State. Who oh might, even if they remain in APC, who might want to cast their votes for him, believing he is one of them. And if a situation, of course, is going to get the PDP votes. And if a situation like that happens, and you have a transparent or near transparent uh, uh, process, then the chances are there, but not as high as the APC candidate. Mm. Okay. But, but let, let's quickly, you know, share your thoughts on this one. I mean, personality, I mean, for the 
PDP in Kaduna. So you have uh, the likes of Shehusani and the fact that he had just two votes. Uh, one, one would think that, you know, the caliber of person that you have, who's seen him very vocal about a lot of, you know, economic issues, uh, issues going on in the country. And then he, he, he couldn't get, uh, uh, you know, that particular support he lost to Ashiro, Isa Ashiro in Kaduna, having just two votes. And he also mentioned the fact that he didn't give this delegate a dime. So um, what do you make of this scenario? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, probably he didn't give the delegates a dime because uh, the delegates definitely uh, we are uh, officials of the governors. And so when I give them a dime or not, it's completely material. That is one. Number two, you're going to be making a great, a great mistake, you know, if you think that uh, our political process is, uh, uh, is so mature that you just need to persuade them without in a financial backing, that would be political suicide. Uh, Nigerians are hungry, and a lot of uh, the voters, the electorate, believe that once you get into office, you're going to abandon them, which is always the case. Which is always the case. So it is like a bed hand is walking in the bush. You come here, you rhapsodize, you make all kinds of promises, and at the end of the day, you get into office, you now uh, surround yourself with security aids and so on. They don't even have access to you. So let me have those one, two, three, ten thousand naira that I'm going to get now because for another four years I'm not going to see you. I'm not justifying it. I'm not justifying it. But that is the situation right now. So if he didn't give a guy, then it's unfortunate. Then he planned to fail. Right. That is the truth about. It. Okay. Uh, now, I haven't said this. Like I said earlier, on, the delegates take instruction from their bosses. It is not. Uh, a referendum of the people's approval of, of, of uh, uh, a candidate. No, it is not. They take instruction from their bosses, like, like in River State and in all states. I will not say practically all, all states. You know, the boss will call them and instruct them on who to cast their votes. So, open up the time, be, be, because of so time. No yeah. matter how yeah. popular you are, if you, the, you don't have the backing of the governor or the leader, why well, I say governor in some states, you don't have governors as leaders. Like in River State, the leader of the APC is not the governor. So it was a former governor, not the governor now. It's not a city one. So if, if you don't have the backing of the governor or the leader of that party, I mean, it, it will be like backing on a sticky weekend right. to think All that right. you're going to get the... Uh, open the moment, I, I hope you can hear me, but let, let's... It's practically going to be blind yes, yes, yes. Because of time, let's go quickly, um, very quickly, because I have one or two follow-up questions for you. To look at all your state where uh, Governor Shea Makide emerged, uh, this he's gotten the party's ticket to contest for a second term. Is this um, a, an endorsement of his, his his achievements as governor, his performance, or you think that is just still more of the same uh, party politics at play in the PDP? I mean, for anybody, any sitting governor or president to lose an election, I think it's of the person's making in Nigeria for now. Uh, because <laughs> as a governor, how are you going to take him away? Unless Mr. President is actually interested in that particular outcome. Unless Mr. President wants that man out, then they know what to do. But if he still has a backing of his people, it's also almost going to be impossible. Nevertheless, to answer your questions directly, the victory at the primaries has nothing to do with his performance as a governor. Okay. It has right. to do with his office as a sitting governor. All right. And I believe you understand what I'm talking about. All right. All right. Very quickly, very quickly. Two elephants in the southeast, Aina yeah, Barbe, Senator, and A.K. Kurema, the Senator, both withdrew from the race in, in Abia State PDP and in Inugu State PDP. Uh, were you surprised? And what do you think could have happened? No, I'm not surprised that they withdrew from the race. They just saved themselves. They saved up uh, the shame that would have come their way. That's exactly what happened. Let us not look at it. We were pitch at the primaries. Let it be. When I mean pitch, I mean P I P P E D. Uh, pitch at the primaries. Uh, let, let it be that we withdrew in order to save our face. They would have lost because they were not definitely candidates right. at the right. government, so they would have lost. So they just tried to save themselves, save up the shame. It's as right. simple we, as that. We have to go. We have to go. Open up, Thank you very much for your time. 
We do appreciate you. Uh, look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on the breakfast. And that's the size of our conversation. Now, if you missed that on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Bachels. See you tomorrow. Good morning.